Hey there folks, welcome to another video. Today I am wearing a Yuri on Ice shirt because I can. It's from like eighth grade. Do I have regrets? Maybe. Will I ever talk about them? Of course not. Today we're doing another like little episode about queer history because it's really interesting and not taught in schools, but it should be. Last time we talked about the Stonewall riots, which are pretty well known if you're like in the know, but otherwise most people have no clue that they happened. And today we're going to be talking about another cool thing. We're going to be talking about an interesting individual named Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk was the first openly gay person in like a kind of political role. He was on the um, Board of Supervisors for San Francisco in the late 1970s. He had run multiple times, but people weren't the chillest with him running. And so some stuff happened, and eventually he got voted in, but he had to reimagine his platform a little bit. So, like, got rid of his mustache, got a new haircut. The way that we're most familiar usually with seeing photos of Harvey Milk is this look. Right here, I'll pop in a little photo. But his original look was a little more hippie vibes, a little more disco, which is this. Originally, he was living on Castro Street, which is kind of now known as like the gay neighborhood within San Francisco. And he ran a store with his partner and it, the store was called Castro Camera. And it was just that, it was just a camera shop. But because it offered a safe space for a lot of queer youth who at that time were leaving home because things weren't as generally accepting as they are now, they would often run to places like LA, San Francisco, especially New York. And a lot of these cities were kind of becoming hubs for LGBTQ plus individuals to just like be themselves and, you know, live their lives. Castro Camera became a very large spot for people to just kind of live their life and exist. And San Francisco in general was known as kind of being one of the gayer cities. Harvey Milk was very open at the time about like being gay. He grew up, I believe on Long Island, and he originally got a degree in teaching from UAlbany. He eventually moved out west after living in New York City for a little while, and he moved out west with his partner at the time. Something that Harvey Milk is very well known for is his policies like for like LGBTQ plus people, which there was some like anti-discrimination stuff thrown in there, but a lot of his policies weren't super queer focused. Instead, he was just trying to be like the general candidate that a lot of people could love and support. So there was stuff in there about like public works and maintaining public parks, a lot of stuff about like having care and stuff for the elderly, and he was just a general like really good person. And it was also around this time that California's governor, I believe, was more conservative, and so they were trying to pass something that would basically say that if somebody was gay or lesbian or bi or whatever and was a teacher that they would not be able to teach and shouldn't be hired and anybody who supported them should also be fired for that and he was one of the main people fighting against it i think it was called prop six this was like a really big thing and he was able to strike it down he wasn't like the direct person but he was one of the larger advocates saying this is bs stop and one of Harvey Milk's most well-known quotes is, if a bullet should enter my brain, let it destroy every closet door. Harvey Milk was assassinated in 1978, which is really sad, but there were vigils held for him everywhere. Like, especially in San Francisco, which is where he was based. But his impact was larger than just that within his community, because he was a vocal advocate and vocal person just being himself. And he was killed by Dan White, who also killed George Moscone, who was the mayor at the time. And this is also where we get the term the Twinkie defense, which is basically a law defense that's just so stupid and outlandish. The reason that Dan White was upset at um, Harvey Milk was because he had shot down a lot of Dan White's proposals when Dan White was on the Board of Supervisors and said, like, no, this is silly, like, don't do this, and George Moscone sided with and supported Harvey Milk. So Dan White killed the two of them, but his defense in court was that he had eaten so many Twinkies that he was basically on like a sugar craze, which is then what led to him killing the two people. This did not work and he got jail time, but it did lighten his like sentence from rather than being something like first or second degree murder, which means it was premeditated and on purpose, he just got charged with two counts of manslaughter. So his 
jail time was significantly less. I think it was around a five-year sentence, which he only served three years of. But Harvey Milk's legacy lives on. It's been seen in like wings of airports being named after him, people still advocating in his name. I know there's a high school in New York City named after him, specifically targeted for LGBTQ plus students who want to have a more tailored education that's going to be supportive of their experiences. And his name and legacy lives on to this day, which is a really cool thing to see. But so often, like, little, like, queer stories like this get covered up and you're like, why? And it's like, you know why. If you guys enjoy this, please leave a comment, tell me who I should do next, or, like, what event I should do next. Subscribe if you're interested for more. This has been a lot of fun. So I will see you kids on the flip side. Bye. I can't snap. <laughs> Bye. There we go.